We finished setting up our IKFK blending, so now it's time to create arm controls. We'll start with our IK arms. Let's go ahead and create an arrow shape, and that way we know the orientation of the arm at all times. So I'll go ahead and actually create a, a line shape. We'll head over to our snap options and make sure we can snap to grid. And then from there, we can draw this out in the top view. Okay, so we'll want this pointing in the direction of the left arm. So I'll just turn on snap and draw out an arrow. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this out. We can turn off snap and exit our, our tool. Heading back over to the perspective, we can now start to reshape this. Maybe scale it in just a little bit more. Head over to our modify panel, get to its vertex level, and maybe bring this out just a little bit more. Okay, so from here, what I'd actually like to do is create another arrow and attach that. So selecting this one, We'll make sure angle snap is on, head over to our rotate tool, hold down shift and rotate 90 degrees. All right, so from here it's just a matter of converting one of these to an editable spline. We'll go to convert to. From there we can head over to attach and choose the other arrow and there we have it. Alright, so now that they're in one shape, let's go ahead and rename this. This is going to be CC underscore L underscore arm 01. I'll also head over to rendering and turn on the uh, viewport option. Okay, and let's even recolor this. We can go with uh, light blue. See how that looks. Just deselecting. Let's see here. There we go. Just needed to go to the select tool. Okay, so we have this pretty interesting IK control. With it selected, we can go ahead and now snap this to our IK goal with a quick snap. Then from here, we'll just go ahead and scale this down. Okay, once we like the size of this, we can go ahead and link this now to our global control. So it will scale. And then from there, we can go ahead and actually just bring this over to the right side. Take care of that. So I'll go to the mirror tool. Copy. Just put in an initial value. Let's say we go with about 20 here and then we could always bring it back okay 20 wasn't enough at all <laughs> so let's go ahead and just quick snap that to the IK goal that's much better alright and then with it selected I'll go ahead and recolor this alright okay so focusing back on our left side what we want to do from here is go ahead and position constrain our IK goal to this arm. So the goal selected, position constrain to the control. So now as we select that control, it's going to drive the arm. After we set up our controls, we'll then go back and set up our wrist. The wrist is going to be set up in a unique way, so we'll kind of save that as our last task for rigging the arm. Okay, once that's done, we can go ahead and bring our attention to the right side. Okay, so again, selecting the IK goal, position constraint to the arm control. And let's make sure that's linked to our global control as well. All right.
right. So we're just about done here. The last task we need to do is, of course, now freeze these control objects and then get rid of their scale. So with both selected, I'll right click, freeze transforms. Now it's just a matter of selecting each, heading over to our curve editor, and locking their scale attribute. Okay, with that done, we have completed setting up our IK controls for the arms. In the next lesson, we're going to discuss setting up suitable elbow controls for these.